On the agenda tonight, we're going back to the 1960s. We're going to be taking a look at Roger Miller, and he's going to be performing King of the Road. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So it's going to be a short performance video for tonight because it's only 2 minutes and 11 seconds in length and Roger does finish a little bit earlier than that. But without further ado, let's get Roger and his band up on screen and see how he gets on. <laughs> Trainers for sale are empty. No phone, no food, no pets. I ain't got no cigarettes, ah, but two hours pushing broom buys a eight by twelve four bedroom. I'm a man who means by no means king of the road. Third box car, midnight train, ba -ba -ba. destination banger, man. Whoa, worn out suit and shoes. I don't pay no union dues. I smoke rope stogies. I have found a short but not too big round. I'm a man who means by no means king of the road. I know every inch and every Around the same traders for sale are in rooms to let fifty cents. No phone, no pool, no pets. I ain't got no cigarettes, I but two hours pushing broom buys a eight by twelve four bedroom. I'm a man who means by no means king of the road. Sing. Traders for sale to rent Rooms to let 50 cents No phone, no pool, no pets I ain't got no cigarettes on And there we have it. So just to give a heads up about where this video is being hosted and there's going to be a link to this video in the description below so you can click on that and go through to When the Cowboy Sings. That's the channel where this video is. I've had to cut off the ends of the video unfortunately to fit it on the screen but just so you guys know that it is available in the description below. But getting into this performance Roger is so relaxed with this and you just relax into the performance because of his confidence, the way that he's clicking his fingers with the tagline of the song and he's slightly slouched in his seat but it's just a great performance from the band as well. It's dynamically exactly where it needs to be. We do have a little bit of a change as we move through the song. It's really subtle, but I will point that out on the guitar as we progress. And we've got a little bit of playing here from Roger as well. And there's some interesting shapes going on, so we will jump into the guitar. So if you do have your guitars out and you want to play along with this, we're starting in B. This is going to be our first chord. You can see the way that Roger is playing with his full bar chord shape there. And he then moves over to the E. And this is interesting because he's doing the full shape on the seventh fret with his bar chord for his B. And then he's moving over to, it looks like he's playing this with his first and second finger for the E. Like that. And it looks like his second finger's maybe going a little bit too far because we're hearing that chord, but his fingers seemingly as far over as the first finger but he must be just stopping shy it just is maybe a bit of an optical illusion and he seems to have his third finger underneath as well maybe playing sixth right at the top like that it might be the case that he's just being very selective with the strings that he's hitting so it's a really relaxed style he's got he's actually playing with his hands so we've got this the downstrokes and the upstrokes. And that was a little. He said. 
starting with that first finger and then finished it off with the thumb. So it's a really soft sound here considering that he's playing a classical guitar with nylon strings. So this is why it's not jumping out. It just sits in the background because with steel strings, the strings that I've got on, they're very much a lot more clangy. They're gonna be a little bit more up front with the sound because they are just more aggressive sounding than nylon strings. So the nylon strings will have a softer sound to them. At the top end, of course, the E, the B, and the G on a classical guitar are nylon strings, and then the other three are gonna be steel strings. Those are the chords that you're gonna need for this first section. And we do have a key change here later on, but rhythm-wise, you can hear the kind of groove we've got here is almost like a reggae sound. When we have this. That kind of thing. Obviously, I'm exaggerating it a bit there because the rhythm isn't as upfront as I'm playing it, but it's definitely got that kind of sound to it. So let's have a little listen out for this key change as well. King of the road, I know every inch and every So, in the background you can hear, and you can see, with the guitar being played on the guy's lap in the background, I'm not sure who it is, but he's just playing the chords and strumming those chords, it looked like it might have been, you can't really make out the slide guitar here, he might just have it tuned to a chord, and it'll be tuned to E, and then just pressing down across the guitar means that you'll get that full chord, but anyway, the rhythm is the important thing to point out because it changes from this slightly understated sound of having, before the key change, this and we're very much just popping in for the rhythm there. As soon as we have the key change, we're then into the C and we're now and if we're playing that same chord further up, we'll be up here. Now we've got all of that rhythm going on. That is the main change that we have that's just gonna change up the dynamic between, for example, going like that and going and now going all of that extra rhythm makes it sound different. There's a different personality to that. It's almost as if the sound that you're hit with now with that rhythm is impatient compared to where we've been before. We've been quite relaxed, but now with all of this extra stuff going on, it's a little bit more excitable. And that is the point because you want to take the rhythm to a different place rather than just having the same feel throughout. And considering that this is only about two minutes in length in terms of the performance and the song, just having that little change in there is a very short song. You're not really going to lose too much interest because it's very short, but there are still these little techniques that are used to keep it interesting. Just to point out as well that Roger, when we have that key change to C, he plays it in that first position at the bottom of the guitar rather than staying with the bar chords higher up. And he'll be playing the C into the F, into the G back into the C. So those are the chords that he's playing and you can play those up on the eighth fret if you want to. It'll just be exactly the same chord shapes that you've had previously. Like that. And because of all that extra strumming, it almost does give it that Hawaiian sound with all of that. Just in the background, there's so many different styles and hints of sounds going on in the background. And this is the thing about Roger Miller. As a songwriter and a guy that just had a knack for writing great songs, but songs that were so different and couldn't really be classified as one particular genre because songs like this that he wrote that were 
almost like novelty songs and you wouldn't really know where to class it, whether it be folk or country, um, <laughs> just singer, songwriter, but because it's almost light-hearted in nature as well with the sound of the song, it's really something you can't class. And I know that obviously he's had songs that have been referred to as honky-tonk and country and folk and so many different genres, but this is the point, that he just wrote songs and it didn't matter what genre people thought they were, he would just write as he wrote and they just really did catch on. And this is a great example of a song that's been used so many times in movies and TV shows and even I remember this from my childhood when is a something about road safety and crossing the road and making sure that you look both ways and this was the song that's being played over the top so i have a very early childhood memory of this song and not that i knew at that point there's roger miller and it's called king of the road but obviously the tagline of the song really does give it away the other thing about this song is the fact that it is relaxed, but there's definite melody in there. When we have that tagline of the song, King of the Road, we have the harmony vocal that comes in at the same time. So it sets it apart from the rest of the song. It really lifts up that one line of the song. And this is Roger Miller and just songwriting, just how to get a line to stand out. Just add a harmony vocal to it and do that as the only harmony vocal in the whole song and it just makes it stand out and it's such a great song from a melodic perspective as well because make no mistake roger is singing this he's hitting notes there's definite melody in there so there's a lot of stuff going on here that will fly under the radar with the guitar the different influences in the guitar playing in the background but also the melody that roger's supplying here that relaxed vocal that he has but also that harmony vocal that comes in and the lead line the harmony vocals are spot on so technically as a performance it is impressive because of the way that it's delivered in such a relaxed way from Roger and the way that he sometimes just veers off into almost a talking quality to the vocal not really worrying as much about hitting the pitch perfectly or having sections of the song that is like talking but then it'll go back into the melody. I do want to cover a bit of Roger's history and career in this video considering that he won 11 Grammy Awards, a Tony Award, he was inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame, also the Country Music Hall of Fame and he was born in 1936 and sadly his dad died when Roger was just one year old and this was during the Great Depression so it meant that his mother couldn't afford to raise her three sons and those three sons were given to the brothers of his father so he went to stay with his uncles and they lived on a farm so it meant that he grew up working as a cotton picker also doing some plowing and his primary education was in a one-room schoolhouse he was introverted as a kid and this is when he started to write songs that's what he enjoyed doing and he did certainly have a very difficult start to his life so he started listening at a young age to the Grand Ole Opry on the radio and he would listen to this with Sheb Woolley, the actor and musician in his own right. He was the husband of one of Roger's cousins, so they used to listen to that and Sheb would show Roger his first few chords on the guitar and this really inspired Roger to think about songwriting and being a musician. He was also inspired by Hank Williams, Bob Wills and of course Sheb showing him the ropes. So at this point Roger was about 17 years of age when he started running away in order to play in Oklahoma and out of desperation he stole a guitar because he didn't own one and he wanted to play and write songs but he then turned himself in the next day and he was given a couple of options either go to jail or enlist in the US Army so he chose the latter he then joined a military group and this was started by Farron Young and Jethro Burns also persuaded Roger to go to Nashville after he'd been discharged from the army 
So he did go to Nashville and he met Chet Atkins. He auditioned for Chet, but then Chet gave him some advice to get a little bit more experience and then come back later. So that's exactly what he did. He went away. He met George Jones as well. And George introduced him to Star Day Records. And he did work with George. They got in the studio, had a recording session together. But at this point, Roger then moved away from music as he got married and became a dad and during this time he became a fireman but unfortunately he didn't really take that naturally to being a fireman but Roger did get attracted back to music. He met Ray Price and he joined his Cherokee Cowboys and returned to Nashville. This is when things started to change because he wrote Invitation to the Blues and Ray Price's version of that song got to number three in the charts, which was a huge change in Roger's fortunes, meaning that he got signed to Tree Publishing as a songwriter. So that's now how he was making his money. And he went on to become one of the biggest songwriters of the 1950s. In the late 50s, 1958, he signed a recording contract with Decca and he went on tour with Farron Young as a drummer or as his drummer and Roger had never drummed so he did that in order to make a little bit more money and after that he did sign a deal with Chet Atkins so he did manage to get back there and this was with RCA Victor so once he was with Chet he then wrote and recorded You Don't Want My Love and that was also known as In the Summertime and that was a huge hit it got to number 14 in in the country charts and he then wrote When Two Worlds Collide and that did even better. It got into the top 10 and unfortunately after this Roger lost a bit of interest in songwriting and started to party a bit in his private life and his lifestyle was a little bit wild and it did result in him getting dropped by the label. It was at this point that he started to consider doing some acting, but he did sign another recording contract with Smash Records. And the agreement here was that they would give him $1,600 in cash and he would write them 16 songs. So they agreed terms and in the first recording session, he wrote Dang Me and Chug A Lug. And those two songs are massively successful. Uh, Dang Me got to number one in the charts. Chug A Lug got to number three. And this really did transform his career at that time. He also wrote Do Wacker Do, which was hugely successful. And then the huge number one that we've just listened to, King of the Road. So he was number one with that song in the country charts, the adult contemporary charts. It also got to number one here in the UK. And it was a crossover hit because it got to number four in the mainstream charts in the USA as well. So he was hugely successful throughout the 60s and had his own TV show in 1966. He was also the first person to cover Chris Christopherson's Me and Bobby McGee and he got to number 12 in the charts with that. In 1973, he wrote and performed three songs for the Disney version, the movie version of Robin Hood. And he continued to write and have songs that would chart on and off in the 70s as well, eventually having a little bit of a break from writing in 1978. In 1981, he wrote the score for Big River, which was a musical based on Mark Twain's Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. And interestingly, Roger hadn't read the book and it took him a little while to get that score together over a year, but it was definitely worth it because that musical won seven Tony Awards, including Best Score, which Roger was awarded. So in that, he did some acting as well. For three months, he played the part of Pap, and this was due to John Goodman making a move to Hollywood in order to pursue his acting there. So then Roger filled John's shoes. He also co-wrote Dwight Yoakam's It Only Hurts When I Cry, which was massively popular as well. And that was from Dwight's 1990 album, If There Was A Way. He also supplied backing vocals on that. And in 1990, that same year of that album release, he went on a solo guitar tour. And this was actually after he had been diagnosed with lung cancer as Roger was a smoker and sadly in 1992 on October the 26th Roger passed away. 
But he had such a successful career and achieved so much, wrote so many songs for other artists, but just had a knack of writing songs that just connected with people on such a deep level and to so much of the population, not only in the USA, but worldwide, especially with King of the Road. It's one of those songs that just was a huge hit everywhere. But it's great to have a look back here at Roger performing live and performing one of his most well-known songs, but he had so many of them. Thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.